How old are you? The atoms that are in you are 30 billion years old. The DNA in each of your cells comes in a direct line from an organism who appeared 3 billion years ago. But the neurons that make you understand me, they are only a few years old. And if everything continues like it is going today, before the end of this century, they will all have vanished. If you are 54, I'm 54, in a sense, you are lucky. You lived already longer than most people before you. For 200,000 years, before civilizations, before cities, almost nobody reached the age of 50. Many children died, and even less than two centuries ago, old age was the exception, not the rule. But in another sense, you are unlucky. Living twice as much as before is far from enough. We need more time, more time to live, love each other, more time to discover the world, more time to invent. And there are people who think that within 40, 30, 20 years, we could live without senescence. We could become immortal. Is this selfish? Is this naive? Is this a dream? Yes, it is a dream. We live in times of dreams becoming reality. How are we going to enhance ourselves to make life longer and healthier? Drugs. When you give to old mice in a lab or to old people, metformin, rapamycin, even the humble aspirin, they appear to live longer. And there are researchers trying to find other products. Gene therapies. We could transform the DNA in our cells and with stem cells regenerate tissues, create new organs. Nanotechnologies. We could create microbes able to destroy viruses and to replace weak cells. But there are also other uh, ways to go further. There are 3D medical printers, there, there are microsurgery. And is this going to change us? Yes, it is going to change us. Like transplantations, like uh, um, vaccinations, uh, like uh, many things that we are already doing. It's going to change us inside to make us live longer, to make us being more human. To illustrate this, I want to present you Calumna Parsoni and Fursifer Labordi, two chameleons from Madagascar, very similar biologically, but Fursifer lives only for a few months and Calumna lives a few years. So we could tweak DNA a little bit and change and win many years. And there are already scientists doing this with animals in labs. Artificial intelligence could help us to live longer. Being human today, it is knowing that what used to be possible only for human beings, is now possible for machines. Maybe one day, artificial intelligence could be stronger than us. 
It could be even dangerous. There are people thinking that. But it could be certainly very useful for medical progress. It could be useful to examine billions of medical data to simulate experiments that we are doing with cells, with drugs, with animals, with diseases. And it could be useful to understand better our beautiful and complex brains and to fight against neurodegenerative diseases. Can we defeat aging? Yes, we can. Will it be easy? No. It will be very complicated. Take a look at this schema. That is how aging is working. Very complicated. But being human is doing things that used to be impossible. 120 years ago, the question was, will we ever be able to fly? And there were great scientists who said, no, it will never be possible. Lord Kelvin, you know the degree Kelvin? Lord Kelvin said in 1902 that commercial flights will never be possible. When the humanity wants, it can do it. Between the first object in the space, the Sputnik, and the first man on the moon, only 12 years passed. It is so incredible that there are still people today thinking, no, it's not true. Like there are people thinking fighting aging is not possible. But it can be possible. We need a paradigm shift to understand that curing aging is something possible, that aging is kind of a disease. And to know also that in the nature, you have living beings who live already without senescence, like uh, some trees, for example. Why are we going to defeat aging? Well, for my part, I want to live at least 300 years so that at the end, I will be able to make such a speech without any French accent. <laughs> but there are other more collective reasons, you know. The first is environment. If you know that you are going to live very long, you will be more careful for your environment because you know that you are there, you need the planet also for very long. So to have a really sustainable world, a really ecological world, to have a really sustainable body, body for there, there for very long, is important. Even more important is the question of non-violence. Technological progress is often beautiful, but it's also extraordinarily dangerous. Somebody said, half, half jokingly, that each year the IQ necessary to destroy the world is decreasing with 1%. Well, maybe it's even more. And if today, if tomorrow, sorry, it becomes possible to live much longer lives, almost without any limit, it will be an incredible crime to destroy such a, a life. Today, killing somebody is just accelerating the dead because we die anyway. Tomorrow, it could be almost destroying the infinite. Tomorrow, killing somebody could become something not only unacceptable, but almost unthinkable. So when are we going to begin to defeat aging. Actually, death of old age is something so awful that you would not wish it for your worst enemy if you could escape it. But you cannot escape it. At the moment, we are confronted to something at the same time unavoidable and at the same time unbearable. And what are doing our beautiful brains with something 
unviable and unavoidable. What are we doing? Unconsciously, so without feeling it, we are transforming this in something more or less positive. We are saying that uh, death of old age is uh, actually natural, that death of old age is something not uh, so painful, but it's not true. Death of old age sucks. <laughs> and one day, it could join the cholera and the plague in the long list of evil inventions of the nature that we don't want for human beings anymore. And I have a dream. I have a dream that someday, in a not so far future, people not so different from us will take a look at us and they will say, life then, in the beginning of the 21st century, was in a way still medieval, was still inhuman, because people had to die of old age. It was inhuman and it was difficult to fight against it for psychological reasons and for scientific reasons. It was difficult, but they succeeded and they made us more human. Thank you.